There you go, sir. Hello, and welcome to the THC Show. <laughs> Due to some technical difficulties, so we're using Glenn Wells' feed today. Uh, Facebook has changed something that's not allowing us to uh, use uh, our regular equipment for this, but uh, that's fine. Welcome to the THC Show. I'm your host, Neil Magnuson. Uh, this is the show where we talk about truth, hope, and change, uh, very important things in our world. Uh, it's hard to know what the truth is and find it, and that's a very important thing that we all do, is try to figure out what is true and what's not. And having hope, of course, is extremely important to, to be able to accomplish anything that you want. If there's no hope, there's no point in trying. So we always try to find ways that there is some hope and reasons for trying, and some ways that uh, those efforts can be fruitful in, uh, in getting the change that we would need to have. Uh, on the show today, we'll have 8 out of 10 Glenn uh, during the 420 session. Uh, we'll have uh, uh, perhaps a phone in with Mary McCarty, but she didn't confirm that, so that might not happen. But uh, we'll talk to you a little bit about what's going on with Mary and with Chris, uh, with the other uh, uh, chapters of the CSP that are going on. And uh, we'll also visit the uh, uh, Healing Wave CSP RV and uh, do a quick check in there. It, it is really hot. Uh, it's been really hot here for quite a while and uh, we're going to do just a short show today as a result uh, it's very hot here in the shop and it's even hotter outside in the sun and, and it's probably even hotter there in the rv it's uh, been really tough for the last few days to uh, do what we're doing here but of course we can't stop doing that uh, coming up on thursday is cannabis day and uh, cannabis day is this uh, wonderful day that uh, has evolved over the course of time um, and we'll see what this year's incarnation is. Uh, cannabis Day started in 1977. Uh, <laughs> technical difficulties. Somebody uh, walked by. <laughs> uh, can cannabis Day was started in 1977 by a, a group of activists in Alberta, the Alberta Legislation of Cannabis Committee, and the uh, Canadian Association to Legalize Cannabis. And they got together and decided that on the July 1st, they would have a Cannabis Day and they would use it to protest the laws against cannabis. Uh, at the time, they, they, their public statement was is that they were neither uh, there to encourage the consumption of cannabis or to discourage the consumption of cannabis. They were simply concerned about the, the, the laws and, and how they were not right. Not right. Uh, over time, uh, Cannabis Day evolved, continued on uh, mostly in Alberta until 1999. And uh, the difference as it evolved was is that it became a day where absolutely the consumption of cannabis was encouraged and the, the commerce of cannabis was encouraged as well. Uh, here in Vancouver in 1999, uh, David Malmo Levine had been brought here from, uh, from Edmonton where they'd been putting on the Cannabis Day rallies and 420 rallies. And uh, Mark Emery hired him to come and work here and put on the rallies and he started putting on the Cannabis Day rally on July 1st. It was not Canada, Canada Day at that time. Uh, it was Dominion Day. It had been Dominion Day since uh, seven, oh, 1879. Uh, cannabis uh, Canada started Dominion Day uh, 12 years after the formation of Canada. For the first 12 years, there was no celebration. But from uh, 1879 on until 1982, there was Dominion Day. So uh, in 19, uh, uh, 1999, when we had Cannabis Day here, uh, there wasn't much of a celebration going on in the city to do with Canada Day or Dominion Day. Uh, it was simply uh, uh, a day that we were using to, uh, to protest the laws against uh, cannabis. And it was kind of a parallel event to 420, but a little more low-key and laid back and, and kind of a, a nicer and more summery event. Sometimes it was a little hotter than it was, it was in April for sure. But it was a wonderful event and it went on until uh, 2015. It grew steadily. Uh, in 2014, we had what would, like, for sure, be the very best cannabis day that we've ever had here in Vancouver. Uh, it was absolutely over the top. Uh, it rivaled the, the attendance of the 420 that had happened in April that year, and uh, we really filled the art gallery with vendors and with people and uh, with a big stage and a huge celebration and a, and especially a protest because uh, cannabis day, as much as uh, you know, all of these get-togethers in the cannabis community are social events because there's a lot of love in our community and, and there's a lot of people that like to have fun and enjoy each other's company. Uh, these events are primarily used as protests because uh, there's still a lot to really wrong and a lot of good reason to protest. And so Cannabis Day was one of those days where that was going on and we were doing a really good job of that. 
Uh, both 420 and Cannabis Day had grown exponentially to the point where we were overflowing the art gallery. And so in 2015, uh, we had a really horrible event. Uh, we, I call it the Cannabis Day fiasco of 2015. Uh, that year, two weeks before uh, July 1st, the city sent letters out to cannabis culture telling that they couldn't have Cannabis Day at the Art Gallery, that maybe they could do it underneath the Canby Street Bridge, but uh, they weren't going to be able to do it at the Art Gallery, uh, that it was going to be under construction. And so, uh, unable, un the Canby Street location was unacceptable. Uh, there really was no way to try to hold it somewhere else. Uh, it's not an event that's really, uh, there's no tickets sold or anything like that. There would be thousands of people descending on the art gallery on July 1st to smoke weed because that's what we've been doing for all these years, uh, no matter what cannabis culture said or anything else. So we continued to plan our event, except that uh, the city put up fences around the, the side that was always used, the Georgia Street side, and they... Uh, did their very best to stop people from setting up on the other side. We had scoped it out. We knew that we could uh, broadcast off of the stage, off the stairs, and use it as a stage, and that uh, we were going to have our regular day back there, but the city had other intentions, and the VPD had other intentions. Uh, they did their very best to stop anybody from parking and dropping off stuff, uh, ticketed everybody. Uh, they had uh, squads of several police officers looking like goons with sunglasses and sleeves rolled up you know, tough guys that were not the usual crew that did our rallies at all. And they were really there to stop whatever was going to happen on July 1st, 2015, after this amazing one in 2014. In fact, the one in 2014 was so good. Um, the, the difference had become between Cannabis Day and 420 is the Cannabis Day lasted a lot longer because uh, 420, you know, once uh, 5, 6 o'clock rolls around, we've done the 420 celebrations, the entertainment shuts down, and then everybody's had a tough, tough, long day, and we all go home. But with Cannabis Day, the city really gears up for a huge Canada Day, and there's just thousands and thousands of people. And our event at the Art Gallery had shut down the streets around the Art Gallery because of the overflow of people. And so late into the night that night in 2014, there was just throngs of people walking up and down Georgia Street. Uh, the, the vendors that stayed, there were several of us. We moved the tents uh, right to the, the side of the art gallery, right on Georgia Street there. And uh, we thought we made quite a difference that year. In fact, we thought that uh, what we had just accomplished between 420 and Cannabis Day had to bring proper legalization. They had to suspend the war against cannabis and cannabis users. It, it had to be over because of what we had pulled off there. But instead what happened was, is there was a RCMP orchestrated uh, uh, pretend bombing at the leg legislature in Victoria that day. And that was the only thing that played on the news for days to come. And uh, instead of uh, us getting front page news, which we should have had for having that huge in attendance on a cannabis protest in the heart of the city on Canada Day, uh, that's what should have got a lot of play for the next few days and that should have made a difference in the laws but instead it was all overshadowed by uh, what the RCMP had done to uh, to coerce this uh, mentally unstable couple into uh, pretending to put bombs or they thought they really were or whatever but uh, that was the big story and we never got the attention that we deserved for what we had done that year and the following year they tried to stop it and uh, in trying to stop it when uh, vendors did start to set up that year, uh, in 2015, uh, around the, the other side of the art gallery, people uh, walked in their tents by hand, and then uh, some vendors set up. And then I finally saw what was a senior police officer, a gray-haired police officer, and I went and chatted with him, and I said, you know, sir, we're, this is not right. I mean, the, the police presence here is very intimidating for people. You're scaring people. Uh, there's no reason for it. Uh, there is going to be a cannabis event here with thousands of people today. Uh, there's going to be cannabis sold here because that's what we do. That's how we protest. That's the laws we're protesting is that you cannot get cannabis reasonably at, at, from some sort of a place, that we're, a storefront or something like that. And, and that was the number one thing that we demonstrated at our 420s and our cannabis days is that you could sell cannabis reasonably without harming anybody and people could use cannabis without anybody being harmed even copious amounts of cannabis. And that's what we demonstrated every time that we did that. So I told him that, and he agreed with me, and he said, we understand, and uh, you know, we're gonna let the event happen here today. 
And so uh, I, I took from that that, uh, you know, we had a green light to go ahead and we would have done it anyway. And so I, uh, I went down and I told a few other people about what he had said and I took out some jars that I had and uh, we started helping people get uh, proper access to cannabis. And uh, those uh, squads of police that were watching and videotaping uh, got closer and closer uh, to the point where I decided I needed to put it all away and sit down and I had no sooner done all of that then uh, they were on top of me, 15 VPD officers uh, tackled me, uh, another 15 VPD officers followed in. I mean, my lawyer and I went over this time and time again to see what they did and how they did it and where they came from and what tactics they were using. And uh, they were trying to thwart hug power, which was, had been that amazing uh, uh, technique that had been developed to uh, make sure that people that are being arrested for nonviolent cannabis crimes are hugged by, by their associates. Don't hug the police unless you want to get beat up. But, uh, you know, you throw your arms around the person being arrested, uh, make sure that uh, there's other people there to, to yell the truth at the police officers about how they're supposed to be peace officers and these are peaceful people and there's no one being harmed here and there's no victim and these laws are immoral and we, you know, and not those sort of things. And then the most important thing is make sure it's videotaped uh, from as many angles as possible. And uh, that had held off the police for so many years since David started using it in Edmonton uh, before he even came to Vancouver. And uh, so that's what we tried to incorporate that day, and, and they had an answer for it. Uh, uh, they had trained for it. Uh, the 15 officers that jumped on top of me and uh, nearly killed me, tried to pin me down, were met with a few of my friends, including uh, some very large friends. Uh, Bert Easterbrook, uh, you know, dove right in there and grabbed onto me and tried to hold on and hug me, uh, uh, keep me away from the police. Uh, that didn't work, and Bert got himself beat up by the cops. And eventually, they, they did arrest me. Uh, they didn't kill me, but uh, you know I was out of air for a while, and I thought I wasn't going to get a, another breath. Uh, and and it was just a horrible fiasco that uh, that really put a damper on our our cannabis day. Um, but we recovered from that. We came back with a vengeance. That that didn't stop that cannabis day. That day, the following year, we had a conflict with another cannabis group that decided they would take over that side of the art gallery, and we moved to the side. Uh, the following year, we decided to go to Thornton Park, and so for three years, we were at Thornton Park. Uh, last year as well, actually, uh, 2017, we moved there, and even with the COVID uh, well underway in, on July 1st last year, uh, we used uh, good protocols uh, and put on the event, and everybody behaved themselves, and it was not a, a virus spreader event, it was an educational event, and a very necessary event, and we get to do it again this year, uh, with the COVID restrictions being lifted on Thursday, on the July 1st, there we have it. 419 has arrived. Uh, you got a minute to get it together, and then I'll invite Glenn in. We'll uh, we'll have the 420 session. So uh, we've had good days at Thornton Park over the last few years, but there is a lot of goose shit that's there. And uh, sorry, Annie Barbie. Hope you're watching. And uh, uh, there was some concern about that and the amount of attention that we would get on a Canada Day. And so that uh, the, the group that's organizing Cannabis Day, it's not the same group as, uh, as usual. Cannabis culture is not involved in this one. Uh, I'm helping them because that's just what I do as an activist. Um, and so uh, D Dave and the, the 420 uh, uh, Robson Street uh, Farmers Market crew will put on a Cannabis Day at uh, Sunset Beach in the parking lot. Uh, they're working on a stage. I think that's going to happen. Uh, vendors are welcome. There's no fees of any sort. Come on down. Space yourselves out properly. Uh, the restrictions are lifted. Uh, use whatever protocols you like. I think we're all going to be a lot uh, wiser about how we avoid catching viruses. I mean, thank goodness that uh, most of uh, my friends and myself have uh, avoided it since it happened. I think that as a society, we're way smarter about how we do that, and we're going to make sure that we do that. But uh, Cannabis Day is for everyone. It's for wherever you are. Uh, in our case in Vancouver here, we're going to try to you know, have a, a semi or organized event to some degree and, and, and continue what we've been doing for all these years. And I'm going to bring Glenn on right now so we can talk about why it's important that we continue to have cannabis here. How you doing, Glenn? There we go. We're resuming. Oh, okay. uh, I hope you folks you are all right. That was a bit over. of a tumble. Yeah. You know, if you're watching on uh, virtual TV, it may have been an issue for you. <laughs> All right. For those of you that are just watching standard TV, well, uh, oh, all right. Where do you want it? All right. I want it there. I'm just gonna put it here, right nice right. and stable. Okay. There nice we and go. Stable oh, on the what? table. Have we got the the cannabis tape we banner in there? What's going on here? Something is in the way. Your, your, oh, is your, it? Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs>
Okay, we're getting it done. Technical difficulties. Yeah. We're working on it. Uh. <laughs> okay, I had it in the middle and then it was set in that little hole there. Yeah, I'm good. We'll try not to drop you folks again. Yeah, uh, right here. Once again, for those with virtual TVs, uh, you know that must have been quite the ride. There. <laughs> stability. There you go. We All got we it. need is a bill of balance and stability in this life. And Neil needs a new phone. Oh, uh, you're, you're gonna move. Oh, the you phone did it? is actually okay, but Wait. Facebook itself will not allow me to access the camera, and I can't uninstall it to reinstall it. So wow. I'm trying to fix the issue right yeah. now. But He's trying to fix I'm sure, it. I'm sure you all heard that because we don't. We're not using a direct mic and. Facebook has got some issues, so we're trying to trying to make it work. On, on his page, we, we do think there's some important stuff to talk about, and so that's why we're going to do a show, even though um, many people have been given the day off because it's so hot. Yeah, um, another one was yesterday. For to start with, yeah, what are we smoking here? We got I, I some got, stuff from the Canada Canada's Cannabis Center again today. Canadian I'm, Cannabis Center. No, I think it's Canada. Cannabis Cannabis yep, Center. Yeah, I can't look because I got the phone now over there, oh. but I do believe it is Canada's Cannabis Center. CCC. Well, you want to look that stuff we got up. some Fruit Loops today, and Neil is smoking some Pink Anxiety. All right. So now this was very fragrant. I, I'm up. suffering a little anxiety because I like Fruit Loops. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. I offered him some Fruit Loops. Did you? Yes, I did. Yep, I did. How did I end up with this thing? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Just because you haven't tried These it yet. People talk to me when I'm distracted. Yeah, you know? yeah. And he just gets distracted pretty good. And so. they either make up whatever answer they want, or I'm saying stuff I don't remember. Yeah, one so of those go two. check them out. Um, make I, didn't, sure. I didn't actually say, like, I'll have the pink anxiety over the food. Did I? Well, no, they, the sponsors wanted you to have it. Because oh. uh, the first time that we brought this on, you smoked the fruit, uh, the Fruit Loops, and I smoked oh. the pink anxiety. So they want the opposite reviews, oh. see? He's a smart guy. Sure. <laughs> and you'd be smart too. If, yeah. you, if you need some cannabis, if you're in a rural area or, or have trouble accessing, uh, there's a deal going on there. Uh, go to that site, check it out. Make sure you read the fine print properly. Uh, make sure you look at what the shipping is about there because, you know, you, you want to be doing it's the right thing. It's but, it's, but it's a good place to go yeah. and, and I'm sure it'll work out okay. And it's all legal packaging. Everything is uh, smell proof. It's also guaranteed if the package doesn't make it to you, they will re, uh, reimburse you and send you another package. And in the sh just make sure you cover the shipping and, you know, being that these are secure packaging and uh, and direct packaging. Because people are looking for access all the time. Yeah. And, and this is one of the ways that we do it. And uh, one of the ways that people can do that is online. And then we'll see what happens with that. I will put the link up when the show is over. So, and it's cannabis, yeah, cannabis, cannabis. Center. This is very smooth, by the way. Oh, it's nice. It's nice. Smooth. If I got that in the mail, I only paid the shipping costs. Yeah, that's it. And good old, good old. So, I said before. I, I can't think of a word. I said, I said before you came on that what we were going to talk about was a little bit about why it's important to have cannabis day. Why we felt even last year. Uh, with the epidemic going on, the, the, because you could buy something pandemic like going this. on. Well, and that's part of it. Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of reasons why we need to continue to protest and yep. why we've been protesting for a long time. In fact, it's so cut and dried that uh, I don't know why we're continuing to have to do this. The fact that that I have to come on here and continue to make it clear just how much money this is costing us. Yep. Just how wrong this is. Just how many people are being harmed by this. And how just how corrupt this all is. This whole you know, so-called now legalization after so-called, you know, attempt to prohibit uh, and now over-regulation and all of these things that are going on with the cannabis thing are just so obviously wrong, upside down, backwards, inside out, corrupt and horribly, horribly costly and devastating to people, mm -hmm. human beings, that I have to continue to rail about this and find different ways to point out the areas where it's wrong and how it's wrong and why it came to be wrong and yep. what would be right every week for all of these weeks that's what I do every show that's what this continues to be about even though almost the same time as I started doing the show two years ago not long after I started doing the show we got what they said was legalization <laughs> legalized and then we had to kind of adjust to what that meant and what that meant was you know pretty clearly laid out on the liberal website leading up to the election and then the Trudeau's uh, monopoly scheme for legalization and, and, and stuff. All of it was there that they were going to strictly regulate cannabis. They were going to keep it out of the hands of kids. And so, what that meant, what strictly regulating, legalizing, and strictly 
regulating cannabis meant was is that you would be allowed to have it if you paid a humongous fine up front to go and pay, you know, $14 for a stupid joint or $18 for a gram for the better stuff. And even that stuff's not good at all. And, and if they did have good stuff, and one day they probably will, and some stuff's probably, then it's going to be considerably even more yeah. expensive. It's like organic so the government food. has just decided that they can parcel it out to the consumers, purchase by purchase, to pay a fine up front to be able to use cannabis. Mm. And, and what that's also meant is that anybody who needs cannabis daily and for medical reasons, and, and, and if they need it and they don't have resources financially, they can't, they can't access it. No. So what we so needed like to be asking for, say it with me, Glenn, well, low barrier, barrier access. access. Yes, not, not have to show ID for some of these people or they can just walk into the store. They don't they need have. ID for blueberries. No. Nope. No, they're more ID, dangerous no, than cannabis. Go shopping at the superstore or anything. No, you need ID for any of that stuff. Yeah, and uh, you know, and here we're having to argue uh, that well, but for those people that want to use cannabis because it's very effective to help people get off of opioids and street drugs, and if they want to do that, that uh, you know, they they shouldn't have to show ID. Yeah. Because some people, especially in the poorer neighborhoods like we're in here, are homeless. Yeah. They're idealists. Uh, they're in trouble to the point where they don't want to show ID no. uh, for whatever reason, and they have good ones, and it doesn't matter, it's nobody's business but theirs, they can't and won't show ID to be able to access cannabis, even if they could get high-dose edibles at the government stores, which they can. Which you can. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and if smoked cannabis would do it and it really doesn't, you know, they still can't get it because they, they can't produce ID. Yeah. So we are that that is a very vulnerable portion of society that needs to have access to cannabis, yep. and that barrier needs to be removed so that those people can come in and, and leave and not have to, uh, you know, not come in yep. because they don't have ID or they don't want to show ID. Uh, there's many people that are involved in opioid use that um, come from general walks of life mm -hmm. that you'd never suspect it. Uh, they're involved because of, you know, overprescription by doctors yep. or, or a traumatic incident that happened that they got prescribed uh, opioids for, or for whatever variety of reasons they've learned that they can treat their trauma with opioids and nobody knows and they can't have anybody knowing and they're struggling with it they want to get off of it they've heard that high dose edibles will help them and, and, and replace the use of those things they need a place that they can go and access those things yep. uh, discriminately so and that they're not, not just the people they're not down. scrutinized they're not, there's not a list made not, nobody's, nobody's taking a picture of yep. their their driver's license or anything like that at all those barriers must be uh, removed from people. And it's not even the government just doing it to these people. Like, I'm a medical person. I have an ACMPR. I've been waiting over six months for my medicine just to be approved. So I can't even go to these stores because I live on a disability pension to be able to buy what I'm allowed to have on my ACMPR. So you ha you have a doctor that has supported you yep, in yep. using cannabis. All the way from MMAR. And from that point of telling you you can, there was yep. a time when you had to fill out the forms and send them in. Yep. And now it's been six months six since months. then and you still haven't been able to access cannabis because the government isn't giving you your license. My, yeah, my designated grower can't grow for me. Yes, I know. And and they're still screwing you that way too. Yeah. They're not allowing low barrier access. They're taking their sweet time. They keep saying, oh, because of COVID. Oh, because of COVID. Well, but even but, people <laughs> that, are, that are using uh, prescription pharmaceuticals, highly toxic and dangerous prescription pharmaceuticals, uh -huh. They don't wait six months to get it after the doctor says Watch they can have store. it. They don't. They don't wait six days. They usually get about get it in about six minutes. They yeah. walk out of the doctor's office into the, the attached pharmacy, and within about five or six minutes, they've got what they. Now that would be it. really nice if a, if a medical patient could do that. Go to his doctor, get his prescription, and go to a weed store, and they would just give it to him under the medical plan. But what should happen is, is that because cannabis is this non-toxic, amazingly beneficial, but, but such a benign plant, is that you don't need your doctor to tell you you can have it. Yeah. You don't need anything to do with going to get it. It's easily available because the government's going to make sure of that because this plant will help you. It'll help you sleep. It'll help you with pain. It'll help you get off of opioids. It'll help you be a nicer person in society. It's a violence suppressor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the world that we should live in, and it is completely bizarre that, that, that our public servants, even with all we know about the value of cannabis now, after the, the reefer madness campaign finally almost exhausted itself out, they still, the, the medical profession is still invested so heavily in their lies 
and, and that they will say that the developing brain shouldn't be exposed to cannabis, but Ritalin is fine, and, uh, you know. <laughs> or chlorobromazine, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, geez, they have, they have some sort of an interest in, in which way this whole thing goes, it seems, and yeah. they'd rather continue with the pharmaceutical, uh, you know, mother load of, 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 of luxuries and benefits that come to doctors because they're able to prescribe these things from these very rich companies that want to be the, the go-to medicine of, uh, of people. But the go-to medicine of people should be cannabis because that is the safe yeah. one. Yeah. That is the one that is most often effective with the least amount of side effects. Not for everything. And that's how our medical profession should be dealing with things, but they're yeah. not. But I'm not going to go on for long about anything here today because it's uh, pretty know, warm in here. It's yeah. pretty warm in here. We're at 432 right yeah, now. Yeah, so we're going to cut you that part of it short. We are going to go outside. Um, I guess I'll go outside and talk because it's a, maybe cooler outside uh, than it is in here, even though well, we have uh, Apparently, somebody said it was. They said it was. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, if you find shade, maybe. Yeah, I'll hold the camera. There is some shade in front of the RV. There if, was. If it's hot where you are, please keep hydrated. Keep cool if you can. Yeah. Stay in the shade. Keep your pets uh, inside. Put a too. damp cloth around your, your neck there. Don't take your dogs for a walk on hot pavement, whatever you do. That'd be terrible. If you're going to do that, uh, please take off your own shoes and socks and walk with your dogs yeah. on the hot pavement so that you can feel what they're feeling. Uh, don't think that they don't have feelings too or that their pads are you know meant for that or anything like that. Uh, it's not cool to assume that at all. I've seen dogs squirm in the heat yeah. and, and just because they're not far. showing it doesn't mean anything either. So many disabled people are in serious pain all around you all the time. They don't show it and, and it's not up to us to assume whether they are or aren't. It's up to us to not force them into situations where the, the disabilities that they have and the pain that they're in will be amplified and so don't be walking your dogs on the hot pavement. And uh, yeah, keep everybody cool. Call the people that you know that might not have air conditioning, and uh, see what we can do to keep each other, to get each other through this. It's a one in thousand year event, apparently. I don't know. I don't yeah, know that's what, what they said yesterday on the news. All right, Mr. Uh -oh. Mark McGregor. Yeah, it uh -oh. fell. It fell. Oh no. Yeah. But cannabis day will not fall. <laughs> you. Cannabis day will rise. Yes. And cannabis day will be good again. And thank you all for sharing today. I wasn't able to do that. Uh, in the sun, it is definitely not warmer out here. No. We'll see what the shade has to offer. All right, we got some shade over there. Yeah. Vancouver. Oh, I think it's actually. Oh, At we the got it. End a, of June. Oh, you got one already today, eh? Nope. 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 That's not a ticket. Is that an old one? Nope. Oh, what is nope, it? Nope. That's a receipt. It's a what? That's a receipt. Hello, Jen. How you doing? All right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good <laughs> idea. So they put in these new parking meter things. Yeah, here. I see that. So yeah. they tore off the old ones. That was part of. We had to. We had to move the RV for a day, which is a big thing to do because it does, the battery is dead all the time and we have to get it going. It's got uh, tandem back tires, but one of them is flat on the other side, which doesn't really matter. <laughs> I can still drive it. Uh, so I had to park it up on Main Street because it had no vehicles here till, from 7 a.m. until 3 um, on Welfare Wednesday of all things. Eh? Most people want to find us. And so uh, we parked it up there. And then in the morning, I talked to, you know, did, we didn't even know what was going on. We had no idea why they were closing down the street. And it turns out they were changing all the parking meters. And uh, so I talked to the guys and they got it done for us before 11 o'clock, before we opened that day. And uh, so that was really awesome of them. There's uh, some of our local VPD guys coming through the lane here, heading to the station up there. And so far we've had uh, no trouble from them for a long time. But uh, anyway, yeah, we, got to, we didn't miss a beat on that one. Um, here we are at the Healing Wave CSP RV. And uh, there's always people joining the show who don't know what that is. I know everybody who watches it regularly, they all know what that is. So just briefly, uh, here in Vancouver, our answer to the opioid crisis was is the cannabis high-dose edibles we had learned through the Herb School 17 years ago are effective for getting people through withdrawal and then replacing the use of those uh, opioids and, and hard drugs here. So when the opioid crisis hit and people were dying, um, and dispensaries were around, there was 150 to 180 dispensaries operating without permits illegally in Vancouver, and there was access through those dispensaries to high dose edibles. And high dose edibles, you know, being effective for helping people get off of these street drugs that were killing people was the answer. Uh, for me, it was the people that couldn't even access through the dispensaries because they didn't have the money, the edibles were expensive. But at the same time, the, the city of Vancouver decided to regulate those dispensaries, to give them licenses, even though there was still uh, no legalization in Canada. And one of the, uh, the restrictions on these dispensaries was they weren't allowed to sell edibles. Well, that was the complete opposite of what needed to happen here to address this overdose epidemic of deaths. And so I went to city council. First, I went to Van Du, the Vancouver Area Network of Drug Users. I got their permission to go to 
City Council present the idea of just giving it away, high dose edibles in care packs to people that would come and get it. Um, I also presented that to the Vancouver Police Department. Uh, we got no response from City Hall. Um, we got a, a thank you and a good luck from the VPD. And for three and a half years, we did exactly that uh, at Van Du. We provided high dose edibles in care packs and had a lineup of people twice a week coming to get these care packs. Uh, that resulted over that course of time in uh, Dr. Malloy writing papers and, sh and doing studies on our group and other, other groups as well about uh, the efficacy of cannabis for the purposes of getting off opioids. Uh, those reports from the city of Vancouver to uh, pass a motion uh, about two years ago now, actually on the 21st of this month, it'll be two years that they passed that motion, that they would support low barrier access to cannabis for the opioid crisis. And uh, we went and met with the city uh, group of us, uh, Jody Emery, myself, uh, Howard DeJong from Van Du, uh, uh, Jared from Green Cross, and we met with the city council that had the motion put forward and passed. Uh, came to an understanding that we'd, we'd find a storefront and start providing our services from indoors, uh, provide low-cost cannabis as well as no-cost cannabis for those people that won't be part of a program, that do have some resources, that need to access cannabis with low barrier. And so that's what we did. And we moved into the store where we were just filming from. Uh, that lasted four and a half months. The city of Vancouver would not give us a license to be there. That would, would prevent our landlord from evicting us for not having a license under threats from the licensing department. And so we all we applied immediately once we knew that was going on to Ottawa for a, a license, but mostly for a temporary uh, exemption to be able to continue what we were doing in the storefront. Uh, they said they'd get on it uh, in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, three months later, they were apologizing for taking so long, saying it would be just in, a, in another few weeks. That was before Christmas. Uh, we heard from them again in uh, late March. Uh, said that uh, yeah, they were still working on it diligently with their team. Uh, there were stakeholders involved and probably shareholders for the most part. And that, uh, you know, we should be patient. And in the meantime, we're still doing what we were doing in the store. We're providing low barrier access, but we're doing it from an RV. And we've been here for over a year now. We've been in the RV for uh, almost almost a full eight months. We're just about the end of eight months uh, tomorrow. And uh, yeah, gone right through the winter. Now we're going through the summer and uh, providing low barrier access. We're running our program out of here. We provide uh, low barrier access to to uh, almost 300 people that get 420 milligrams of high dose edibles every four days for free. And uh, other people can also access here. And we're just waiting for Health Canada to either give us an exemption that would allow us to at least do it from the storefront. But uh, you know, more reasonably, we think we should get a license to be able to do this. We have demonstrated over all this time, well over four years, just how safe it is, what we're doing, how it meets the needs of this community. It's exactly what people need here. Uh, we know that because we've responded to all of the feedback that we've gotten over all of this time and provided that which is required to be, to be able to help people the way that they need to be helped here through cannabinoids. And so we should be given licenses to do that. We are dealing with trusted sources. Um, all of our stuff is tested. There's no reason that we can't continue that and get licenses for the people that are, that are supplying to us as well. They deserve to be given licenses to be able to support what we're doing and other low barrier access shops that should be able to operate across Canada and provide the much needed option of cannabis to the other drugs that are available so easily in the neighborhood all over the place and also being provided by government. Yeah. who's decided that the right answer for opioid addiction are other opioids provided by pharmaceutical companies that are... That are Easier you know, access. Easier access. Yeah. We got well, a easy access to high dose cannabis edibles it's is hard. the option that will save lives, yeah. that will address this problem in a way that is very, very effective for many and most people here. And so that's what needs to be supported. That's what needs to be going on. So we're here. We've never missed a beat. We've been here eight hours a day, six days a week for over a year in the RV for eight months. There's the princess there's, that runs it all. There's our, your manager. Our, uh, <laughs> our angel. Your, your team leader. Oh, team she gets angel. a smoke pot and, while and she's what working. Do you have here? Whoa. What is going on here? Uh oh. Uh -oh. Look at that. There's something must be going on. Uh oh. There must be something. Something's going on here. Get out here. Get out here. Uh, that's right, the boss has spoken. So what this is, is we have, we have a team that's been together for a very long time. Uh, all of these uh, people here, Andrew's uh, been in charge of the volunteers and he's now in charge of the cannabis substitution program for the last year. Andrew, George has right, been one of the holy rollers and, uh, and now also has been staff here for over a year and helps Andrew out with the program. And both of these guys helped Jen out on her end and, uh, and it's a pretty smooth working machine. 
And George is 23 today, and uh, we wanted to wish him happy. <laughs> 23 with how many years how experience? Have you been 23 now, George? 22. Yeah, at least. <laughs> 23, <laughs> 23 years experience of being 23. He doesn't look a day over 24. I don't know. Oh, uh, 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 look at that. He's already. Years right, old. We haven't even sung happy, happy birthday ready? yet. Yeah, yeah let's do it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear George. Happy birthday to you. And watch out for the tree. <laughs> Somebody can light it. So what do you got to say for yourself? Speech. Yeah, speech. 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 It's hot in there. No, you can do it out here. That's Actually, it's nice out here. It's really. beautiful. There's yeah, a beautiful, beautiful nice breeze. We should have done the show out here. You're lucky you weren't here yesterday. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was worse hot. yesterday. Yeah. So, uh, can we have a piece of cake, George? Yeah. Is, is that, let him make a wish. Is that medicated? No. Uh, it's all right, because George is already medicated. medicated. <laughs> One or the other is all you need. Yeah. You know? The only time George is not medicated is when he's sleeping. George is always medicated. <laughs> always. <laughs> That's That's Pretty good? Yeah, you got yeah, a speech? Yeah. Well, thank you, George. You might not want to give a speech, but I do. Um, <laughs> George is one of the wonderful people that came along early in the program. We've been doing this for four years and four plus months now uh, since we started at Van Du. And George was there early. Were you there like, like the first or second or third time? Or how? When did you come along? We pulled him out of the line. We pulled well, him out of the line pretty we early. We pulled him out of the line. Yeah. Yeah. I first met up with you when I started rolling for 420. Right, because we knew each other before. But, but when did you show up at Van Du to, to yeah, be there because I was there giving out weed probably? After you told me one day when I think I was um, I think I was rolling or I was packing seeds for Dana, but that would have been like four or five years ago at least. Well, right, this was that long. Yeah. Ago. That's what it was, and, and you would have been rolling for us at four twenty, not yeah. long after I started it in that, February that's anyway. When, yeah, that's probably. Um, and maybe you were home. packing seeds for Dana before that because I think he was doing his thing more like January, February. Yeah. So you, but I know you were there, you know, yeah, right early on, and. Uh, and then, and then when we needed a roller, yeah. uh, first Ted Scully, he he ran my volunteers, and then he told me one day, I can't do this for you anymore. And, and that was a bit shocking, because that was quite a job that he'd undertaken there. Really, it was quite a job. Uh, what we started to do there at Van Du, and giving out hundreds of care packs to these people that would line up for it, and all the dynamics of dealing with people that have issues, and, and what have you, in a big lineup, uh, having somebody to look after the other volunteers and to keep everything running smooth, was very important and I'd really come to value what Ted was doing but he said don't worry I got this guy Andrew for you and he'll be just fine and Andrew I don't I mean did you miss twice in four years of that about that yeah about that I'm yeah. only sure I, was I think you missed when... the same amount probably since I we did this for you when I was year. sick yeah I, I was know, here when I was can't sick can't do anymore right <laughs> nobody gets to go to work when they're sick no no, no. you gotta call in sick now yeah 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 pay you anyway yeah. 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 I'm here in Seoul anyway. Oh, you hear this? Always. When you're sick, he'll still pay you. Hey, I don't know. My sister. <laughs> I'm yep. volunteering. I'm uh -huh. My shoulder's here. Sorry, sorry, Andrew. It, it, it does, George, George, it doesn't matter. It's on video. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know I was coming. Um, Andrew? Surprise! Yo, lady. Oh. <laughs> this is Patty, George. Hey, George Patty! Obvious better two thirds. Yes. And, uh, she brought a treat. And she's got I a treat. I bought an infused birthday cake. <laughs> no! So Patty did one better than Jen. Yeah. Nothing yes. about this. Only Jen knew. How long have you guys been pretending you're not married? Uh, 26 years. 26 years. <laughs> there we go. Now that is definitely a medicated cake. There we go. Oh, and didn't you make that yourself? Yes. Oh, He's great. He's been helping George uh, celebrate his 23rd birthday for these last 22 years. Yeah. <laughs> She helped me in the spatula. Fucking kids walking around stone. <laughs> <laughs> High on icing, is she? <laughs> she wouldn't uh, leave me alone. <laughs> so this is what we do here. Yeah. Well, this is the family we, we have here. Actually, what we do do here is we run these programs where we allow low barrier access. 
and people come here and get what they want. And uh, we try to have as much fun as we can because that's really important, to, especially in this neighborhood, especially what we've been dealing with as, as a whole globe for a year and a half, but for what this neighborhood's been dealing with for decades and what these people around us, uh, not necessarily these people, but you know the people that we're here to try to reach and help, uh, you know what they've been dealing with for a very long time. That's why we're here doing what we're doing. It's very important that they have as much fun as they can too. So we try to provide a community of compassion and some laughter and some good times and make sure that everybody that comes here walks away feeling good, feeling happy that they got something. We don't turn anybody away. If they're not part of the program, they get a muffin, they get a cookie, they get a joint, they get all those things as well. And now we got to go back to work, apparently. <laughs> so that was fun. And, uh, you going to sign off? Yeah, we'll come over here and sign Okay, we'll off. sign off. All right. So... I want to give a huge shout out to the other cannabis substitution uh, chapters that are really going strong out there. To Chris Backer in Halifax, who's well into his, his, his completing his second year, and all the good that they've done there, and, and it's just incredible. Uh, Chris is a force that's kept that going and uh, worked with the community. And, and, and Mary is another one that's now a force out there, you know, toting the cannabis substitution project uh, banner. Uh, she was our head baker here for a long time and had to go back to London, Ontario. And she's just put in her 10th week of providing cannabis there in London, Ontario. Uh, she's had some contact with police where she's explained what she was doing and gotten waves from them as they drive by. Uh, she's got a business owner there at 420 Elizabeth Street who nice. really liked what she was doing the very first day and has allowed her to use their private property to dispense the care packs uh, to help people there get off opioids. Uh, today, Mary had another police officer come by, a, a female officer who uh, told Mary that what she was doing was illegal and that she should stop doing what she's doing uh, and she should consult with this other group to, to sort of, you know, get their approval. Uh, the other group is a group that tries to help people get off of opioids in London, Ontario by handing out the lauded. <laughs> and so, for some reason, the uh, absolute safe cannabis option that Mary is offering there that we've been demonstrating for all these years is safe and effective uh, is, a, is a bigger problem than the handing out of Dilaudid and other uh, safe supply pharmaceutical options uh, and it's not and it's not and so uh, this is an opportunity for Mary to educate people in her area to go in and meet with that group and get their approval for what she's doing because how could you not approve what she's doing we've got the approval of doctors and professors and city councillors the local psychiatric nurse all the harm reduction groups they all support what we're doing here we know what we're doing is the right thing to do here and so if you're in the London Ontario or in Ontario in general you can support Mary and the cannabis substitution program there. It's the pursuit of low barrier access community cannabis shops, which is uh, something that we can all get behind. It's the same as the, the, the cause for legalization that we've been fighting for for all of these years, these many decades now, that people have been fighting for legalization of cannabis. We haven't got legalization of cannabis. We've got legalization of corporate cannabis controlled by the government where you pay the fine up front and, and you can only be a farmer of it if you go through amazing hoops and pay huge amounts of money and, and become one of the selected few. And then you still get to pay a whole bunch of fees and taxes and all the other stuff that goes with it so that it doesn't make it as viable a business as it should be. So in any case, our pursuit of low barrier access or good quality cannabis that everybody can go and purchase easily and, and all of it's good because it needs to be good and why wouldn't it be good? That continues in the name of the pursuit of low barrier access community cannabis shops. So help us uh, if you can in that. Uh, anybody that used to be fighting for legalization, if you're not happy paying your fines up front, if you think the cannabis should cost as much as say heirloom uh, tomatoes or orchids or other plants that people grow that don't cost anywhere near what cannabis costs, then uh, you know our fight is not over. We still need you. There's lots we can do. And what we really need to do is get the government to give their permission, these public servants to give their permission for people to be able to have storefronts where they can go and get cannabis as an option to whatever else they might be thinking of using. And that needs to be there for them. And our government needs to do that because that's what's saving lives. That's what will give people the opportunity to stay alive during this epidemic of deaths due to a tainted hard drug supply. So we're here fighting for that. You fight for that too if you can, please. Uh, be as kind as you can to each other while you do that. Go through your life trying to do as much good as you can. 
And as always, you know, it's a tough world and it's, it's easy to be depressed and it's easy to focus on negative things. But I recommend you focus on positive things and what positive differences we can make and what you can make. And we can all make a difference and you all have ideas of how to do that. Just Google how to make a difference in the world and you'll get a whole bunch of different ideas. Find one that really resonates with you and feels good and anything you do is going to feel good. So go ahead, feel as good as you can, help change the world, have as much fun as you can doing it. We'll see you Thursday. And we'll see you on Thursday, Cannabis Day. Sunset uh, Beach. You know, celebrate it somehow, somewhere. But mostly it's a protest. That's the day you really want to think about what you can do to change this. Because your dollars are being spent to ruin your friends and family's lives. So that rich assholes can, can monopolize the whole cannabis world. And this ain't something that any of us should be able to stand for. And so if you're weak. alive and awake and you understand what I'm talking about, then please take some time. Maybe Cannabis Day is the day. And uh, let's try and change the world in this regard. And a whole bunch of other good things will happen if we do that. Cheers. Cheers.